All right, in this lesson, we're gonna go over impairment and we're gonna talk specifically on an example of a limited life intangible asset and testing that intangible asset for impairment, okay? And so let's review a bit. If we have a limited life intangible asset and we wanna review it for impairment, we have two steps. Step number one is we're gonna use the recoverability test to see can we recover enough future cash flows that offsets our carrying value, okay? And if it doesn't, then we will move on to step two, and step two is we're gonna use the fair value test, okay? I'm gonna read you an example, below will be the example, and then we'll kind of go through the calculations that I have on the board. So. Our example says Black Asset has a patent on a machine that produces their widget for sale to businesses throughout the world. Due to a change in technology, it has been increasingly hard to market and sell their widgets to businesses. Sales have declined dramatically for the past five years and Black Asset is reviewing their patent on the machinery for impairment. The carrying value of that asset is $12 million. So on the books for Black Asset Inc., they have this patent that they probably purchased. So they purchased it for $12 million. So it's on their books for $12 million. That's how much they're carrying it for. So if you look on the assets, you're going to find patent and you're going to find $12 million. Okay. Black Assets Accounting and Finance Department calculated the expected future cash flows from the patent and found it to be 7.5 million. So 7.5 million future cash flows. What we're saying here is we're saying that uh, for the foreseeable future, whenever the expiration of this patent is, between then and now, our future cash flows is $7.5 million. So we will recover $7.5 million from use of that patent over the next X amount of time period when the patent then expires, okay? Or the useful life is no longer there, okay? It was further determined that the fair value of the asset is 5.5. So if I were to actually sell this asset, this patent out in the, in the world, it would be worth $5.5 million. So it's on our books for 12 million. It's worth 5.5. We think we can get $7.5 million over the rest of its life, whatever life it would be. 10 years, five more years, whatever it is, okay? So step number one is the recoverability test. We look at our carrying value and we look at our future cash flows. Okay, so I don't care right now at fair value, okay? I know that it's worth less than we have it in our books. So the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna put our carrying value of 12 million and our 7.5 million together, okay? Now the question is, going back to, I don't know, algebra or pre-algebra, which one's bigger? Well, we know that the carrying value is bigger, so we would have a greater than sign there. So 12 million is greater than 7.5 million. Makes sense? Seems logical. So the carrying value is more than the future cash flow, so I'm gonna get, it's on our books for more than what I can get in the future of using this patent. There means, that means that there is a possible impairment. We're not saying that there is an impairment, there is possibly an impairment, okay? So then we move on to step two, fair value test. Fair value test, we're gonna take the fair value and we are going to take the carrying value. So fair value is 5.5, so we'll put 5.5 there. And our carrying value is 12 mil. 12 mil, okay? So which one's bigger? Well, again, 12 million is bigger than 5.5, so we'll put the less than sign there. So 5.5 million, or the fair value, is less than the carrying value of $12 million. Therefore, there is an impairment and we're gonna book a loss. 
How much are we gonna book the loss? We just take the subtraction. 12 minus 5.5, 12 minus 5.5 is $6.5 million, okay? And so we would have a $6.5 million impairment loss. Our general entry would be loss, debit loss on impairment for 6.5 and credit the patent for 6.5. Okay, typically, I mean, if you have um, accumulated, to, accumulated amortization, you can do that too. Um, typically with intangibles, we take it right back to the actual intangible asset, in this case, patent. So that's an example of a limited life impairment test for an intangible asset. Now, to throw kind of something else into it, we're gonna have the same problem, but we're gonna change the numbers, okay? So, in this case, um, the carrying value of the patent is $7 million. The accounting and finance department calculated the expected future cash flows from the patent to be $5 million. And then the uh, fair value is 8.5. So, we have carrying value of seven. We've got a future cash flows of five and we have a fair value of 8.5. So it's worth 8.5 if we were to sell it today. Over the next X amount of time periods, we think we can get $5 million of revenues from this or free cash, future cash flows. And then the, we're carrying it on our books for $7 million, okay? So same tests here that we did before, just different numbers. So let's start with the first one. Carrying value and future cash flows. So we're only looking at these two numbers. Let's go carrying value of seven million. And then we have future cash flows of five million, okay? Seven is greater than five. So, so carrying value is greater than the future cash flow. So that indicates possible impairment, okay? Now let's do the fair value test. The fair value test says that we take the fair value and compare that with the carrying value. So the fair value is 8.5 million. The carrying value is 7 million. Okay. Which one's bigger? This one's bigger. So the fair value is bigger than the carrying value. Therefore, in this example, there's no impairment. Now, why would this make sense? This would make sense because I could sell it for $8.5 million dollars it's on my books at seven, therefore I would show a profit of $1.5 million. Therefore, there isn't a loss. This is not value um, too high, I guess you could say. This is not value too high because I'm gonna make a profit if I were to sell it today. So yes, even though I'm only gonna get $5 million of future cash flows, I could sell it right now for $8.5 million. Now, some of you might say, well, that's unrealistic because it wouldn't be worth 8.5 if the future cash flows is five. True, okay, unless someone believes that there's something else I can do with their patent that raises this future cash flows over five million, okay? Now, before I end this lesson, uh, this part right here, we would use for a indefinite life intangible asset. So, we're not gonna do an example on an intangible, uh, sorry, an intangible asset that has an indefinite life, but we would start here. So we would almost not even care about our future cash flows, okay? And we would just purely look at the fair value and the carrying value. So if this was a indefinite, okay, infinity and beyond, we would simply look at fair value and and carrying value. Notice here, the fair value is less than the carrying value, so if this was a trademark, we would write this down immediately, down by 6.5, and we would get the same entries, okay? So, on this side, our fair value is more than, than the carrying value of seven million, we have no impairment, we're good with our indefinite life asset, okay? So, again, if I change this up just a bit, uh, with an indefinite life, intangible asset, we wouldn't use the recoverability test, we'd go straight to fair value, and we would look at the fair value and carrying value here, fair value, carrying value here. We would still have a loss here, and we would uh, still have a uh, non-impairment over here.
So hopefully that helps you out with understanding both limited life and indefinite life, intangible assets, and testing for impairment. In the next video, we're going to go over goodwill because goodwill is a little bit complicated as we talk about reporting units and then implied goodwill.